I don't dream of being an employee. I don't want to wake up every day and build somebody else's dream. It's like, ew, the ghetto, you know? What's up, everybody? I'm your girl, Stacy. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Help a sister out. Help me grow, okay? Now, this video is going to be a life update on what it's been like being unemployed for one full year due to coronavirus. <laughs> Let's get into it. So, pre-ponder replay, I was in the hospitality industry and I was bartending at two different jobs. Yes, two, because LA is expensive and I got a certain lifestyle I like to maintain, okay? So I was working in LA Live and I was also working at a rooftop bar. So I had two jobs in the same industry. I remember being at the LA Live job when the pandemic like hit. I worked on a Sunday and then Monday, I got a message on our like employee messaging system saying that no one would be able to come to work because Governor Gavin Newsom put out an executive order to close all restaurants and bars and that we all should stay home. And I was like, what is going on? When we realized that we were not returning into that restaurant anytime soon, they decided to give all the food away to employees. So literally everyone was there was like, bags of free food it was like the best thing ever like literally fill my refrigerator up for free but it was also very scary and everyone was like nervous i remember one of our teammates had teammates what do you call people co-workers co-workers one of our co-workers Kima, she was like does anybody mind praying so we all literally were like yeah let's pray because it was such uncertain times so Kima got everybody in a circle and we were praying and the girl who prayed prayed so well and everyone was like crying because we didn't know what was next we didn't know the future of our jobs you know some of them got kids they got bills to pay everybody ain't got it like that we need that constant check you know so it was just really scary something i thought would be a one two maybe three month thing has now been a full year and it has been wild once I realized I was not going back to work anytime soon. I got really scared. Like, and I needed to get out of LA. So I went to Atlanta and I stayed with my mom for two months because I was like, I could be in LA potentially spending money or I can go back home and chill with my mama. And I know she cook every day and she got me. So that's what I did. Okay. So I was there for two months and I figured, okay, it's time for me to face my fears and go back to LA and see what the heck is up. So I get back to LA and nothing's changed still on lockdown it is what it is and i was like fuck so what has it been like being unemployed for one full year hmm it's been interesting to say the least i've had days where i'm super happy and i've had days where i feel worthless it's been quite the adjustment because i feel like i've always wanted to be where i'm at which is not being someone's employee but when i actually got what i've been asking for it did not come the way i thought it would that was a tough pill to swallow i don't think i would have had the courage to leave the hospitality industry when your bartending is fun i mean i worked at a rooftop bar i could wear whatever i wanted to wear to work i interacted with people all day from all different cultures and you know occupations i met celebs it was fun you know it's so much fun and the money is just quick it's quick and it can become so addictive and i saw myself heading down that route and i was trying to get the courage to leave but i could never do it so the pandemic basically was like nope you're done period and i really took it as a sign just like that 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 was my out and i had to have the courage to kind of stick with it so when i think about it like that i'm grateful for the pandemic but it's been a tough thing to deal with in regards to my emotions because i feel like i've always been busy you know i have two jobs i have a vibrant social life and i'm never really home and i don't feel like I allowed myself the time to sit down and face the woman in the mirror. There are flaws and things I wanted to work on that I never put the effort to do so because I was always on the go. I was here, I was there, I was everywhere, you know. I was living my life, period, okay? I was a roller coaster ride of emotions. I feel like I could never just get a grip of myself. Like happy days, sad days, angry days, feeling worthless days. I just 
felt like I was so mean to myself and I just start feeling like a failure in life and that was kind of hard to look in the mirror every day and not feel like you're doing anything to better yourself. It was just tough and I just feel like most of the pandemic or at least the beginning half was me just trying to stay afloat mentally so that's been quite the struggle but i do feel like now i'm a lot better and i've been doing a lot of self-work like meditation yoga saying affirmations getting back into journaling doing like little positive things to make myself feel better because i have a really bad tendency of being really mean to myself and i'm learning to give myself grace because i didn't get fired you know what i mean I was laid off due to a global pandemic. So it's like, it's not your fault, girl. Like, come on, get that through your head. So I'm finally accepting that. The hardest part has been adding structure to my life. When you have a job, structure kind of just takes this place in your life because if you go to work at five, you know you need to have anything you need to do within that day done before that time frame of you going to work but when you don't have a job and you're waking up every day feels like a holiday so i'm waking up not knowing what to do because i'm confined to the walls in my apartment and i can't go anywhere and so busybody has now become a homebody and she hated it because i was just trying to get a wrap of my emotions and i was mentally just not okay I laid around and did nothing, which furthered me feeling worthless. So I told myself, girl, we gotta get together. We gotta put some structure in these days. We gotta do something to make us feel like we're an adult, like we're okay. So I personally start adding structure to my days. I wanted to wake up early. So in the service industry, I'm getting off work late all the time three four in the morning and i was like i really want to get into a better lifestyle i want to wake up earlier so i start waking up at 7 a.m i start making sure i eat breakfast working out little things and scheduling it so that i feel like oh today i have things on my plate today i'm gonna do something to better my life so i am grateful for structure when it comes to the pandemic I've got this question quite a few times on my Instagram, but a lot of people have wondered how the heck have I been surviving financially during this year of unemployment? Well, that too has been a roller coaster ride. So when I was laid off due to the coronavirus, I didn't file unemployment initially because I was thinking I was gonna go back to work. I was like, I'm not doing that. A month went by and I was like, uh, we gonna have to figure something out because these bills are still due and ain't no money coming in. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna file unemployment. So when I filed unemployment, I didn't get it initially. And there was an issue with my claim and I was like, what the freak is going on? All my friends have their unemployment and that's when the $600 was added on. So unemployment was like healthy, but I wasn't getting mine. I was like, what? It sucks when like everyone is receiving a benefit that is owed to you as well, but you don't have it. So now you feel like you're like shipwrecked and that's how I felt. No one can understand me. I'm like, oh my God, this is so stressful. Like my apartment is so expensive. I need money. and. I wasn't broke because luckily at the beginning of that year, I started becoming more financially like savvy, like saving money. I don't know why I air quoted that, but I started saving money and I started investing a little bit and I just got into a really good space financially, but I knew that that space wouldn't hold me over for no more than two more months. So I was like stressing, okay, stressing. When I got unemployment, it was three months later. Three months later, so basically when I got unemployment was basically when I was running right at the end of my reserves. I mean, I'm talking about the end, like $200 left to my name type of vibe. Um, that's not a vibe, what am I talking about? So it came right on time. Like, they may not come when you want it, but it'll be there right on time. That's what had happened, okay? That's what happened. My money came right on time. And because I wasn't receiving it for like three months, it was a big lump sum of money. So I was like, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, I was just grateful. It was, it was the worst time, but the perfect time at the same damn time. So that happened. So I had the lump sum of unemployment money. Then I had a homegirl hit me up and she's like, hey sis, I'm doing this gifting community where you put this amount of money in and you get this money amount of money out. And I had heard about this. I'm like, girl, everybody I know lost their money. Like, nope, I'm not doing it. And she was like, sis, 
I promise you, you won't lose your money. If you lose your money, I'll refund you. So I was like, okay, well, it's a win-win at that point. She'll refund me if I lose my money. So this particular one was quite expensive. It was $1,400 to get in, but I had just got a lot of money from unemployment. So I was like, okay. <laughs> So I end up doing that, right? 1400 to get in, then eight people gift you. So if you do your math, I did that. And I actually got the rewards from that. And I did that again. So I was able to survive due to lump sums of money I had got. So that's really it. In addition to continuously getting unemployment. So I had some money in the bank. Shoggy, what you think? so that I could survive. So I was not stressing too much and I just learned to sit back, work on my structure in my life and really just enjoy this moment of like peace and solitude. What did I learn in one year of being unemployed due to the pandemic? Well, the first thing I learned was be prepared. Life is full of ups and downs. You can never predict what's next. Life is super unexpected and it will take you by surprise just like the pandemic took the world by surprise. But it's better to be proactive than reactive. So if you put yourself in a position where you've already taken necessary steps to basically buffer a fall just in case an emergency happened, it won't hit you as hard. When you're reactive, you haven't set anything up and now you're scrambling to figure out how to make it through. So if anything, I learned to be proactive and I can promise you, I will never be in this position ever again. The second thing I learned was to pivot. There is power in the pivot. And when I say pivot, I mean learning to be adaptable and shifting and changing when what's been working doesn't work anymore. Such as jobs are now realizing that virtually people can do things from their home. So having people come into a physical location isn't as necessary as we thought before the pandemic. Most of my adult life, I've been a bartender and I knew I was sick of it, but I didn't know what I wanted to do next. So this was a point in where I needed to pivot. What can Stacy do to make money that will still be something she's interested in and something that she's passionate about? So although I did not want to bartend anymore, I still have a passion for hospitality and craft cocktails. So I created something called Sipping with Stacy. If you follow me on Instagram, you know I do Sipping Sundays where I teach you how to make a craft cocktail from the comforts of your home. I decided to come up with something where it allowed me to virtually teach people on Zoom how to make craft cocktails. I teach you all the tools you need, all the ingredients, and I teach you how to make these cocktails so that you can just be a host professional when you throw an event for yourself. So that has been beautiful. I do think I need to promote it more so that I can get more business. but. That is something I started in the pandemic. That's how I pivoted from physically going to work every day to using the same skills, but now the money goes all to me and I don't have to split it with any of my coworkers. <laughs> what I've decided is I'm gonna ride it out for a little bit longer. I'm still getting unemployment. I still got some money in the bank. So we gonna just live off that for as long as we can until we're at a point where we're like, all right, it's time to get a job. And that's where I'm at because I'm not excited to be an employee again. I don't want to be an employee again. What are my future goals? Mm, that's a loaded question. I don't feel like I completely have the answer right now, but I have a um, trailer. Like if you're watching a movie, I have a trailer version of it. <laughs> I don't want to work for anybody and I'm not looking for jobs. I'm just not ready to call myself an employee again. That actually gives me mass anxiety and I, I'm not doing it to myself. So what I'm going to do is really put my all into my passions and the things I created to make money, which is sipping with Stacy. And I'm also thinking about doing an ebook on this particular topic. I feel like I'm 
well versed in so I can make some passive income. Additionally, I intend to take YouTube seriously. I'm just trying to become consistent. So I'm starting with one video a week just to get my consistency down. And when I have that down, I move to two videos a week. So I want to make money that isn't tied to someone else. I want the money I make and the success I gain to be purely a product of what I put in for myself. And that is the route I am just going 110 miles down the highway on. I just can't do it anymore. Mentally, I think that I'm just, my brain has tapped out of being an employee. But, never say never. If there comes a point where I absolutely have to take a job, I'm pivoting just like these companies pivoted and I'm, I want to do something online. I no longer want to go into a physical location. I don't want to deal with other human beings face to face. Eh. I think not. I'm good. I remember reading this book and it talked about the big E and the lowercase E and the big E. I don't know what these are, but the big E is entrepreneur. The lowercase E is employee. I'm tired of being a lowercase. I want to be a capital letter. So that's where I am in regards to that part. <laughs> In conclusion, although this pandemic has been so tough to deal with, it has also been a blessing in disguise for me. It took me out of an industry I was so sick of but didn't have the courage to leave on my own. It allowed me to gain structure in my life and I became way more intentional about the things I do. In addition to facing flaws, looking in the mirror and really doing the personal work on myself internally. So overall, I'm grateful and I'm excited for what's next. I think this is gonna be a great year for me regardless of my situation right now. I'm learning to not let your current situation determine your future destination. So I'm hopeful. I'm in great spirits. I feel good about life and I'm gonna be somebody, period, okay? So just stay around for the ride and we're gonna have a good time so thank you for watching this video i really appreciate the love and support don't forget to leave a comment below thumbs up this video subscribe to my channel and turn on your post notification i love y'all bye